Welcome back to Well, That's Interesting. The, wow, I didn't know that could happen, and I don't like the sound of that other thing, edition. Sounds about right. <laughs> uh, sounds like we are right on track for an episode of Well, That's Interesting. Yep. I never know half of this stuff can happen, <laughs> and, and, I, and I often don't like the sound of it. Yeah, yeah. But it's... I'm also here for all of it. Always. 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 So invested. Uh, today is in between 079, an insect whose farts immobilize prey. Oh my God, I'm obsessed. <laughs> I'm obsessed. Full disclosure, I did yeah. like sneak a peek and see the word farts earlier. And yeah. I was like, yes. <laughs> Today's the day. <laughs> Today's the day. We're back on track with butts. And we yes. are talking about farts. That's right. Yes. We're right where we're supposed to be. Exactly. <laughs> Pumped. And, uh, oh good, new spider spreads to the East Coast. No! Ah! <laughs> Sorry. Full disclosure, we are on the East Coast. Yes. And neither of us are big fans of spiders. We're both pretty okay with spiders. Ooh. Ooh. I mean, I like it when they're not around in my, in my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite kind of spider is also a spider that's not here. Um, <laughs> those are the best spiders that are somewhere else. I appreciate what they do. I appreciate their role. Yeah. You know, I just don't want it in my shoe. I don't want Same. it on my pillow. I don't want it in my mouth Same. When, I'm, when I'm sleeping. <laughs> Same. I don't want it in any holes, ear hole, nose hole, no hole. No holes. <laughs> and if they must get into a hole, I better never find out about it. Yeah. Ever. <laughs> Ever. I never want to know. Oh, dear Lord. Uh, haven't we all swallowed like eight spiders in our lives? Or is that cockroaches? I don't know. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Am I making everyone feel super comfortable? I I'll hear, let Jill keep I, talking. I heard, I've heard the spider thing before. Yeah. I've heard that. We should look into that, how many spiders we actually eat. Or not. Yeah. <laughs> we could just stay in the dark about that one. <laughs> uh, I'm Jill Chacha, and I'm... <laughs> And I'm with the uh, very hungry Marissa Riley. That's me. I'm hungry for spiders. <laughs> no, I'm not. I never want to see or hear about a spider in my vicinity, but mm, oh. I think we're going to talk about it today. We sure are. And I'm going to get sweaty oh, and yes. nervous. You, you, you really will be. Oh, my God. I, I, my God, when I saw this thing for the first time yeah. and that it's going to be here eventually. Oh, my God. I, uh, it's... It's, I can't, I can't. All right, we should just begin, I guess. Um, if okay. this is your first time listening, welcome to the flock. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Riley here comes in cold and learns everything in real time, just like you. It's true. I had no idea what we were going to talk about, except for, like I said, 12 seconds before when I peeked at the word fart. Um, Exciting. But yeah, after learning the full details of what we are going to talk about, I <laughs> am nervous. Excited and nervous. Excited and nervous. Uh, but it's honestly like, thrilled. This is going to be like a horror movie. I can't look away. Mm -hmm. And I won't be able to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Uh, so we're right on track. Perfect. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, yes, today, my friends, we have two stories, each full of surprises. And surprises, as you may know, come in a variety of forms. Yeah. Uh, and one of those forms just so happens to be farts. One of my least favorite surprises. <laughs> um, but also one of the funniest surprises. Yeah, that's what makes them great. Yeah, I really like it when other people do it because it's, it's funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it makes me laugh yes. out loud. That's it. Farts are unifying in that in that aspect. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the universal language of laughter. Um, <laughs> They, they say this thing, uh, stand-up comedians are like, never make a joke about farts. I'm the opposite. I think we should only make jokes about farts. <laughs> That's right. This is the fart hour. This is the fart well, hour. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> I know what I'm working on next week. An entire hour about farts. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Farts are... We've done several episodes about farts. There's we, a lot to say. We've talked about dog farts before. They yeah. like to study like what the chemical composition of dog farts. That's right. Now we're talking about um, an insect whose farts immobilize prey. I'm, I mean, it's it, it's out there. I'm There's pumped. plenty of material for an hour. Yeah, plenty. So anyway, tell me tell me more about the, the fart of the day. 
<laughs> well, according to the New York Times bestseller by Nick Caruso called Does It Fart? Amazing. The, the Definitive Field Guide to Animal Flatulence. According to this book, the world is filled with many creatures and nearly all of them, you guessed it, pass gas. So this is this this goes between species too. Yes. This this covers almost everyone. It's universal. Universal. It's universal. I love it. Yeah, our long dead dinosaur friends did so. Fish and millipedes are farting as we speak. Amazing. A whopping 110 insects fart, including the legendary cockroach. Cockroach fart. That sounds <laughs> like <laughs> the worst punk band I've ever heard. Or, or the, the best. best. <laughs> I really want that t-shirt. I want that t-shirt with the grungy writing. Yes, cockroach A fart. picture of a cockroach, but with a skull. I'm into it. I'm into it. Artist, I'm, on it. I'm looking at y'all. Make this shirt happen. Back to the podcast. Just another thing we have to do. When we eventually get our fucking merch store open. Jesus, We I need know. a goddamn spreadsheet. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> so. Uh, birds may tweet, but they can't toot. But don't worry, spiders may. Uh, more research needs to be done there. But for sure, you and I certainly do. Oh, yeah. Now, despite that literal hundreds of thousands of species fart, uh, there can only be one champion. Oh, really? Yeah. One, <laughs> really? One whose flatulence is equal parts powerful, functional, and yes, unexpected. Yeah. Dr. Marissa, I'd like to show you a picture of who just may be the world's best farter. And, <laughs> and I'd like for you to describe, to the best of your ability, what is in this photo. Oh, my God. Who is our best farter? Farter of the year. Farter of the year. Yeah. yeah. I, I, you ready? I'm, I'm okay. ready. And uh, all photos we talk about today will be on our social media stuff. So please come on by and see the world's best farter. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> this is uh, it. Surprising, isn't it? This is it. This is it. I was expecting like a gorilla or a, like a hippopotamus because I feel like they would have very robust, mm. loud farts. Yes. And I was wrong. What I am looking at, uh, my friends, is a moth. Um, I think it's a moth. It's moth-like, It's yeah. moth-like. It's like this kind of white bug with long antenna. And then it's got these kind of leaf-like mm -hmm. wings. Yeah. And it looks really nice. This looks like something that's never farted before it in the look world. Like it, yes. it does not look like something that can fart. I don't know where the gas would come from. Um <laughs> But yeah, it's a white bug with uh, brown leaf wings mm -hmm. and antenna, and it looks kind of nice. Yeah. It looks I, sweet. It's got the teeniest little head with the biggest eyes. Um, yeah, it's, its abdomen is very thin. It looks very fragile. Yeah. I've, it looks like this thing could break in half on a windy day. I'm scared if I breathed in fast enough, it would just yeah. like go... <laughs> Yeah, put a pin in that. This thing oh, is really, really, really small. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah, believe it or not, this fragile-looking insect has one of the world's deadliest farts. No fucking yeah. way. But before we get into how we know this, let's get to know our hero a little yeah. bit more. Oh, yeah. <laughs> let's get to know him. My friends, this is the beaded lacewing. Cute. Yeah, and they're found on every continent on Earth except Antarctica. Makes sense. Uh, basically, anywhere there's termites, you're going to find a beaded lacewing. And we'll get into why uh, the whole termite thing but in a minute. Sure, so, sure. Anyway, according to the brutally titled article, uh, Ohio's Natural Enemies Lace Wings. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, I know. Dude. <laughs> Over at ohioline.osu.edu, quote, adult lace wings are soft-bodied with long, slender abdomens and four membranous wings that have longitudinal... Longitudin <laughs> This wow. word is tough, you guys. Man, longitudinal veins. Nailed it. And many cross veins. Yes. They hold their wings tent-like over their abdomen when yeah. at rest. That's actually kind of cute. It's really cute. Adults have chewing mouth parts. Chewing mouth parts? <laughs> <laughs> That's how I is describe this myself. Is this... <laughs> I have chewing mouth parts. <laughs> I was like, did you write this quote? Are we still doing the quote? <laughs> I'm sorry. It's totally 
totally from the uh, <laughs> this brutally titled article. Wow. Yeah. Uh, they have chewing mouth parts, long thread-like antenna, like it was really long. It was really long. Uh, and bead-like iridescent eyes. Uh, brown lace wings, like the one you saw, Dr. Marissa, yes. are often brown to gray in color with hairy bodies and are often confused with moths. Yes. End quote. They look like moths um, and it was kind of hairy. Yeah. A little fuzzy. Yeah. So these things are itty bitty too. Uh, tops, they grow to half an inch. No, you're kidding. That's it. That's, that's like the length of a fingernail. Yeah, pretty much. That is wild. Yeah. Yeah. Very small, very unassuming. And in fact, it's not even the adult version of this lace wing. That's our main focus today. What? Hey, we're going to talk about their larval stage, which is fucking bonkers. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. But it makes me worried because sometimes the smaller the thing... Yeah. Then it's like really deadly. Like really small spiders are really deadly. Mm. So it's... these farts. <laughs> these farts are wow. I can't wait till we get to it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so... I'm I'm cool. So when a mama lacewing is ready to lay her eggs, she does so within walking or squirming distance Fair. from a <laughs> from a termite termite's nest. Termites being their number one prey. So that's why wherever you find termites, you're going to find these lace wings. Got it, got it, got it. So they're eating the termites. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, after hatching, these lace wing babies instinctively know to mosey on over to this nest to start feeding on whomever they find inside. Amazing. Fun. Uh, But I know what you may be thinking. A wingless, legless creature that, get this, only weighs seven hundredths of a milligram? What? Is going to take down a way bigger termite? You fucking bet it is. No. <laughs> How does that fucking work? I have, I have an eye. Is it the farts? It's the farts. Oh! <laughs> Shit. Dr. Marissa, please describe to us one example of a lacewing larva attacking a termite, as described by researchers J.B. Johnson and K.S. Hagen. Nothing would make me happier. All right, quote, A larva repeatedly approached and retreated until the tip of its abdomen was directly at the the termite's head. The apex or top of the abdomen was lifted... (laughs) And waved past the termite's face without contact. Mm -hmm. I'm obsessed with this. The termite (laughs) was not repelled as it made no obvious effort to escape. One to three minutes later, it was incapacitated, line supine, with its legs moving irregularly. End quote. (laughs) I have so much respect for these little fuckers. Wow. Oh my God. I wish I could do this. Can you imagine if you're walking down the street, someone runs up to you with a gun, they're going to hurt you, they're going to steal your shit, Mm. and you just push your butt Mm -hmm. into their face, wave it around. Left to right. Yeah, and they're not going to do anything because they're like, like, what? What is this? This is confusing. And then they're on the ground. Twitching. Twitching. Amazing. That's wonderful. (laughs) Wonderful. (laughs) Humans, we got to evolve. I know. What the fuck? We got to get on this. Yeah. So, yeah, my friends, this baby lacewing released, quote, a vapor phase toxicant from its anus. Amazing. That's my new favorite sentence. Yes. <laughs> Say it with me now. Vapor, vapor phase toxicant, toxicant from, from its, its anus. anus. I'm going to get that fucking tattooed somewhere. <laughs> Love it. Trap stamp. Yes! I, I screamed in your ear. I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's, it's valid. Yeah. The, the excitement is valid. Absolutely. So. Yes. Yeah, I mean, basically, that's a very fancy way of saying that it farted in the termite's face. Fuck yeah. And the fart didn't kill the termite. No, it paralyzed it. What? Yeah. Twist. I know. Now, I absolutely wish I had a video to show you, but this study and observation was done in 1981. I see. And can you fucking believe no one else has attempted to recreate this interaction to get it on video? To be fair, a lot has happened in <laughs> the last true. 40 years. That's true. So... But I don't know if I was like a scientist who cared about, you know, bugs and stuff. Uh, this, is, this, uh, this would be on my list. This would be on my list because I'm like, how do we harness this? Things- we could weaponize it. <laughs> oh, don't. Please. <laughs> Maybe not. But you could put it in some fucking pepper spray. And that's true. We got that, that could be yeah. really cool. Yeah. I feel like people would take that in the wrong direction immediately. A can of farts. Can. <laughs> it's basically. It's a- <laughs> I love uh, it. Yeah. So, 
paralyzing your prey with your fart, a fart so terrible you can eat them alive and they don't fight back, that's impressive. Yeah. But that's just the start. What? Now, in that 1981 study by J.B. Johnson and K.S. Hagen, they noted that paralysis lasted for three hours. Okay. And if for some reason the prey wasn't eaten, the termites eventually died shortly after. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> paralysis was three hours long. That's insane. Well, maybe the the baby larvae like really likes really fresh food. Uh, we'll get into that. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I think mm-hmm. it's a snub. I think it wants the freshest shit. It wants the whole foods. Mm-hmm. It wants stuff that has not been frozen. Okay, that's a theory. Yeah. That's a theory. Well, well it's it's close, but that's not it. Okay. <laughs> fair. Totally sorry, fair. Sorry, sorry. It's okay. Sorry I tried. Sorry to crush your dreams. <laughs> I know. I had such a look of wonder in my eyes. Yes, I, I, I had a twinkle. I just... I just I just floated my ass in front of your face. <laughs> Destroyed your dream. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm so twitching. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> so, um, where are my notes? Okay. Um, Dr. Marissa, please tell us what else was mind-bogglingly surprising about these teeny fatal farts. I would love to talk about it. All right. And crush my own dreams. All right. <laughs> I'm so Acqu- sorry. No, it's totally fine. Uh, according to the Wired.com article by Gwen Pearson called Silent and Deadly, their farts, quote, their farts are powerful enough to immobilize six termites with one blow. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Once the larva uh, delivers its toxic toot... <laughs> Poetry. Poetry. Uh, It can leisurely scuttle over and chow down. If a few termites are caught in the backdrift, that's just extra food. Amazing. Even more astonishing is that early stage lacewing are tiny, about uh, 0.07 milligrams in size. The average size of their termite prey was 2.5 milligrams. End quote. There you go. So they're taking out some big thing that's right yes to put that size discrepancy into perspective the termite is 36 times bigger that's wild that'd be like if i was trying to fart away like a dinosaur yes exactly (laughs) we all see it yeah (laughs) everyone picture me because you've all seen me (laughs) yeah picture yourselves farting away a dinosaur yeah a big one yeah. <laughs> yes, the big one. Yes. Not, not the little ones. No. The ones, the, the big ones, you know, the, the big fuckers. The big ones. <laughs> That's right. Now, this is one incredibly potent fart, and it turns out this gas also happens to be very target specific. Okay. Now, in the lab, those two researchers added fruit flies, two kinds of small wasp and book lice to the mix. Okay. But the fart did nothing to them. What? Only termites were affected. Oh. It's like these larvae have a fucking vendetta and they know what they want. Yeah, they really do. And it's termite. (laughs) It's termite meat. It's termite. I hate myself. (laughs) <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sure there's a market for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Trademark, 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 trademark. trademark. <laughs> so I know what you're thinking. What magical concoction is coming out of their anus? Yeah. What is what it? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> what is it and why? Drum roll, please. We don't know. Uh, we, don't, we don't know exactly. Shit. And maybe that's a good thing because... Yeah. Like you just brought up, you're like, let's weaponize it. Like, yep. no, let's let's not. We have the enough. American in me. Yeah. I don't even like weapons. I was just that's my knee jerk response. <laughs> it's fucking terrible. It's true. Yeah, we have enough horrible things. Don't worry about it. But yep. seriously, unfortunately, like I said before, not much has been built upon that 1981 study. Yeah. But we do know a few things. And let me tell you, what we know doesn't really help or explain anything. It just kind of creates more confusion. Okay. Here's what I mean. I mean, it's impressive, but fucking confusing. Yeah. Uh, for example, as Gwen Pearson of Wired so beautifully explained, quote, Indeed, this whole group of insects has something just not right going on in their colons. A constriction between their stomach and hindgut prevents immature stages from pooping. What? That's right. The larvae don't poop. But but they're eating the termites. I know. I know. Yeah. Oh. I know. Let's get into it. They work around this problem by acting more like spiders than insects. Okay. Their pointy, straw-like mouth parts inject digestive enzymes into the bodies of their victims. Once the innards of their prey are liquefied, they slurp it up. 
any solid matter that happens to be ingested is retained until they turn into their adult form and can finally take a giant dump. End quote. <laughs> She's just staring at me like, no way. That's yeah. A long they hold time. it in. They hold it in till yeah. Never hold it in. No. I respect these creatures. That is a lot to go through. Yeah. And they should be able to fart away any of their meals if they want to. Yeah. That just sucks. I know. I mean, I'm, they're not like like us, like sitting on the computer thinking like, oh, I wish I could take a shit. But <laughs> it still sucks. It's very interesting. It's so it's so bizarre. Yeah. And if there are any gung-ho entomologists out there, or if you know one, please hit them up. There, there's a whole undiscovered fart field waiting for you and is your claim to fame. Please tell us what is in these farts. And because uh, my guess is that it's just a gnarly case of constipation. That could be it. Constipated farts, man. Wow. Oh, they're the worst. Yeah. They smell very bad. Sorry to be graphic, listeners, but <laughs> I mean, you're already here. Yes. So, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that, gross. I leave you with that. After the break, New Yorkers may have a new roommate by the end of the year. Oh, no. <laughs> Stay tuned. Please do. Don't leave me. <laughs> Have you ever wondered what really happened to Amelia Earhart or the lost colony of Roanoke? Do you ever find yourself scouring the internet for vicious Victorians and their murders by gaslight? Or perhaps you're just sick and tired of women being constantly misrepresented or plain lied about throughout history? If so, join me, Katie Charlwood, history harlot and reader of books on Who Did What Now, the history podcast that's not your history class part of the Area of Media Network. Available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Adios, au revoir, au revoir de zen, my friends. Bye-bye. I'll be seeing you. We're the All Creatures Podcast. Each week, Angie and I explore and share amazing details about the many animals we share our world with. Plus, Chris and I are both PhD scientists and educators. So we do the deep dives in the scientific research and then come back and share what we learn in a fun and casual way. We also speak with other scientists, animal experts, activists, and many other conservation enthusiasts from all over the planet. So you can find the All Creatures Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Hey everyone, Jill Chacha here from Well That's Interesting, and I am absolutely thrilled to tell you about Spotify for Podcasters. I use it, I love it, and it all started by downloading the free Spotify for Podcasters app, which has all the tools you need in one place to record and edit your masterpiece of a podcast. Spotify for Podcasters also distributes your show to all major platforms, so when you hit publish, your episodes will stream not only on Spotify, but I'm talking about the Apples, the Googles, Stitcher, Good Pods, the other ones... (laughs) You get the idea. And you can monetize your podcast with no minimum listenership required. You could also set up monthly subscriptions and record ads just like this one. So what are you waiting for? Download Spotify for Podcasters today and start changing the world. Oh, and please, stay interesting. And we're back. We are so back. We're so back. And my friends, if you're a longtime listener of this show, you've probably heard an episode or two about our arachnid amigos. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we've, <laughs> we've covered massive chonkers from Australia. Yes, we have. <laughs> They're ones capable of taking down bats, birds, even snakes. Oh, uh, that's right. Yeah. We've talked about spiders that build nests using the corpses of their prey. Yep. We've also covered the other end of the spectrum, talking about teeny ones that are vegan. Yeah. Little vegan ones. Yeah. Now, today, we've got another surprise. Amazing. And... She's a beauty, I guess. Okay. Kind of. Um, (laughs) (laughs) They're definitely... They, they're definitely different than the other spiders we've talked about yeah. uh, and who they are, where they're from, and how they may be helpful, question mark. Oh. Even though they're an introduced species. 
makes them stand out and yeah, it makes them really surprising. Okay. Yeah. Now, Dr. Marissa, I'm going to throw you right in. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to show you a photo of a spider that successfully made its way to the United States. First of all, well done. Yeah. But second of all, I'm nervous. <laughs> Um, we'll get into all the fascinating details of how it got here and such, but first, I just want your input and reaction as a uh, as a Texan and a New Yorker. If you if you saw this in your house, uh, I'm, I'm are thrilled. you ready? I'm um, just yeah. <sighs> take a deep breath. I know. Okay, everyone, prepare yourself uh, and come on over to our social medias and uh, take a look at this spider who uh, is going to be a new resident of New York in yeah. a few months. All right. Oh, I don't like it. Um... <laughs> It's, I hate this. It's I terrifying hate at first. This. Yep. Um, yep. Mm-hmm. That's too big. Yep. I don't have any, It's really big, you guys. Okay, I'm looking at a tree branch. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm looking at a tree branch, and yep. I'm looking at a big-ass Jumanji spider. This looks like a fucking <laughs> big-ass Jumanji spider, and I hate it. And no, it's beautiful, but also... I don't want it. Could, those, I don't want it on my continent. <laughs> those two things could be true. It could be beautiful and horrifying. Yeah. And that's what this is. And that's what this is. It's it has the long, longest, thinnest legs and that's that are also creepy. hairy and have yellow spots. Yep. So it's on like the legs. A, yeah. yeah. It's a yield sign telling you to yield and leave the country. <laughs> um uh, it's got this big body. Yep. That's got yellow and gray stripes and like a little red bit. Yep. And uh, and I'm stressed. Yeah. And it's got a bunch of webbing around it. I don't know what it's up to. <laughs> I really want to know the exact size of this because uh-huh. all I can see is the tree branch. I have yeah. nothing for scale. I'm glad you brought that do up. I, pic- do, I do have a photo for scale. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. This photo... Doesn't really help for scale, but I do have another photo of this spider in relation to an adult hand. Great. Okay. Okay. (laughs) And in this photo, she's also eating a caterpillar. Okay. So there's a lot going on here. Okay. Okay. This this is a lot, but here it is. Okay. I'm cool. I don't like it anymore. Um, (laughs) Yes. It is, I would say, this is on a person's palm, a brave soul, Mm -hmm. and it is, I would say, about the size of their palm. Yes. So look at your palm. Mm-hmm. Everyone now, look at your palm. Legs and all, it is the size of a, of a person's palm. It is eating a um, caterpillar. Yep. That's not the scariest part at all. It's the fact that it's on a human. And I see a web behind it, and the web is pretty wonderful. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about their webs. They're, okay. They're pretty... I will say I yeah. am obsessed with spider webs because when I was a kid, I lived in the woods and I would see them all the time. Mm-hmm. And they're very beautiful and they can get so big and oh so freaking weird. And you can find all kinds of crap in them. That's right. If you ever see a spider web, get kind of close and look around. They're not going to come and like jump on your face, but you can see all, uh, all the shit they've got wrapped up. Mm-hmm. I sound like an old man right now <laughs> you sound great no. i sound like a it's probably, you'll find a shoe yeah maybe a can yeah a can of farts a newspaper do y'all know what newspapers are i don't know <laughs> what an old sentence <laughs> you'll find a newspaper I, I don't even know if people still do that anymore uh, uh but yeah it's a big ass spider and, and i'm stressed yeah yeah well so who is this fashionable creature? Well, my friends, this is the Joro spider. Oh. J-O-R-O. And you can find them throughout Japan, Korea, Taiwan, China. And since 2013, you guessed it, you can find them in northern Georgia and western South Carolina. Ah, <laughs> they've traveled a long way. Yes. I like how they skipped countries yeah, they to get to- here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they skipped a lot. They skip. How did? They, how did they do that? <laughs> wow. We'll we'll get into it. Okay. Uh, according to our buddy LiveScience.com, uh, females grow to about three inches in diameter, mm-hmm. with males about half that size. Okay. And it's the ladies that wear this crazy color pattern. Yeah. Uh, there's yellow and blue striped, thin, long legs with a yellow and blackish striped abdomen. I will say it's very haute couture. It's mm. very fashionable. Yes. It's a really cool spider, but just thinking about it. Anywhere close to me makes me stressed, right. yeah. like a lot of fashion. So <laughs> fashion makes me nervous. 
Uh, they're also classic orb weavers, meaning their webs are circular and symmetrical. Yes. Which you brought up. Exactly. And get this, quote, since the spider hitchhiked its way to the northeast of Atlanta, Georgia, inside a shipping container in 2013. Genius. Yep. Its numbers and range have expanded steadily across Georgia, culminating in an astonishing population boom last year that saw millions of the arachnids drape porches, power lines, mailboxes, and vegetable patches across more than 25 state counties with webs as thick as 10 feet deep. End quote from Ben Turner of Live Science. Do you think it's like the, the, the climate or the environment uh-huh. in, in Georgia, that they're like, they've been hanging out in China for a while, mm-hmm. Taiwan. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, they're like, oh, I want to try something different. They get to Georgia and they're like, this, <laughs> this is it. I'm glad this you- <laughs> is the life. Sweet tea and other Georgia stuff. Peaches. <laughs> I don't know much. I'm sorry. I don't know much about Georgia. If you're from Georgia and you've seen one of these things or want to talk about your culture, please DM us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for it. Yeah, I'm actually glad you brought up the whole climate thing. That's really great. Amazing. Yeah. So wh- these are a few facts about them and how they got here. But Dr. Marissa, please tell us what awesome legend is attached to these spiders as well. Oh, I love a legend. Yeah. <laughs> okay. From, I'm way too excited. Okay, from Wikipedia, quote, Jorogumo is a legendary creature in Japanese folklore. A Jorogumo is a spider who can change her appearance into that of a beautiful woman. (laughs) She seeks men to seduce whom she then binds in her silk and devours. End quote. This is my favorite legend I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah. A beautiful woman spider killing men and <laughs> wrapping them up and eating them. That's so fun. Yeah, yeah she can hang. She can hang. <laughs> she can come over for a drink. You're cool. Uh, Joro Gumo. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, that's a kick-ass story, but Despite that and its appearance, it actually poses no threat to people. Oh, really? Yeah. Don't worry. And that is super good news because researchers are like, heads up, East Coast, she's coming your way. Uh, Let's get into it. Yeah. (laughs) So a new study published February 17th in the journal Physiological Entomology. Nailed it. You know the one. Yeah. Uh, That study suggests that the Juro spider, which moved into Georgia by the millions last fall, is as hardy as they are beautiful, having resilience to the cold. Oh. Yeah. So odds are they will move their way up here and feel right at home. So how do we know this? So Andrew K. Davis and Benjamin L. Frick did a little comparing and contrasting. Okay. Studying the Joro against its cousin, the golden silk spider. Oh, that sounds very familiar. Yeah. It actually migrated to tropical climates of the southern United States 160 years ago. Oh. So they're here too. But those golden silks, they didn't travel any farther. They they were like, this is it. I'm done. That's right. (laughs) Exactly. I'm good. Dr. Marissa, please tell us, what did they discover, and why are the Jaro spiders so damn hardy? First of all, I like that we're using the word hardy yeah. to describe this <laughs> awesome woman spider. Right. Um, but yeah, I'm really pumped to talk about this more. All right, quote, by tracking the spider's locations in the wild and monetizing their vitals. Oh, monitoring. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it'll be monetized <laughs> at some point. Amazing where my brain goes. Okay. Uh, Quote, by tracking the spider's locations in the wild and monitoring their vitals as they subjected, uh, caught, as they subject, subjected, caught specimens to freezing temperatures. (laughs) Why am I, what am I doing wrong? Okay. Okay. By tracking the spider's locations in the wild and monitoring their vitals as they subjected, caught specimens to freezing temperatures Mm -hmm. uh the results found that the joro spider has about double the metabolic rate of its cousin along with a 77 percent higher heart rate and a much better survival rate in cold temperatures holy shit yeah uh additionally joro spiders exist in most parts of their native japan which is very which has a very similar climate to the U.S. and sits across roughly the same latitude. 
Uh, quote, just by looking at that, it looks like the Joros could probably survive throughout most of the eastern seaboard, uh, Davis said from LiveScience.com. Uh, okay, ignoring the fact that I forgot how to read. Um <laughs> It looks like we're going to see these pretty soon. Yeah, they're super, super hardy. Yeah, I mean, it seems like they're built for this place. Yeah, they've got the metabolic rate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, according to to the study, 74% of Joros survived a brief freeze compared to only 50% of their cousins. Amazing. And I know what you're thinking. How are they going to get here? Well, there's two ways. Okay. Quote, The potential for these spiders to spread through people's movements is very high, Benjamin Frick said. Anecdotally, right before we published this study, we got a report from a grad student at UGA who had had accidentally transported one of these to Oklahoma. (laughs) Oops. Oh, my God. Did they just get into his suitcase or his clothes? Whoops. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Basically, yeah. Ah. Uh, So they can stow away and... Which is actually how they got here initially. Yeah. And two, hold on to your butts. Okay. After hatching, baby Joros spin a few threads of silk and perform a Pixar-worthy feat called ballooning. Shut up. Mm-hmm. Shut up. You know where I'm going with this? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> is it like parachuting? Yeah. Oh, my God. Isn't that cute? <laughs> I'm going to cry. Okay. Tell me more. Yeah, they, literal, they literally ride the wind, which can carry them as far as 100 miles is fucking awesome Mm -hmm. that is the coolest fucking thing i've ever heard do you think they um they go (laughs) they they better fucking do for the whole hundred miles you (laughs) they better they better uh and i know what else you're thinking what the fuck are they gonna do to the environment well oh i wasn't but i am now Well, if you haven't heard any alarm bells about them, unlike the murder hornets, for example, yeah. that's because the Joro is kind of helpful. Oh, I like uh, that. Yeah, entomologists are optimistic about their presence, and here's why. Uh, they're not dangerous to people or pets. Love that. They love mosquitoes, flies, and, quote, they have been observed catching the brown marmorated stink bug. Nice. <laughs> Another invasive species that native spiders in Georgia have not been known to eat. Oh, so they're... End quote. From the wiki. So if I see one, just freak out a little bit, but Mm -hmm. let it maybe, like, hang out. You can hang out or shoo it it out a window or something. Gently, yes. Exactly. So I just love how it ate an invasive species. That's so handy. Even though it was (laughs) an invasive species? Yes. It's like that whole Simpsons situation. Oh, my God. I think about that twice a week. It is <laughs> applicable to so many of our episodes. It's yeah. so funny. It, I call it the uh, Simpson solution. Yeah. Yes. That's what I call it. <laughs> solution. Oh, my God. So in some quote, there's really no reason to go around and actively squish them. Got it. Frick said to news.uga.edu. So my fellow New Yorkers, heads up <laughs> <laughs> and good luck. The side of these things will take a few years off your life if you're not expecting them, yeah. let me tell you. Um, yeah. But it's just one thing we uh, will just learn to deal with. I mean, <laughs> it's just like everything we, else. We deal with so many rats. Mm. Maybe this thing will eat the rats. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and they're gigantic fucking webs, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or just freestyle. Like, can you imagine <laughs> watching one of these things drag off a rat yeah, that was dragging can. off a piece of pizza? <laughs> yes. And just this sort of parade of freaks. <laughs> and then there's someone attached to the pizza because they're hungry. Yes. Of course. Of course. There's like a kid from Bushwick <laughs> right. with its mouth clamped and yeah. it's wearing ugly shoes. Mm-hmm. I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> thank you for listening. Thank you. <laughs> For listening, rating, telling your friends about the insect whose farts can immobilize prey. Oh, yeah. Remember that? (laughs) That was awesome. (laughs) And please, stay interesting. Please do.